Hello everybody, it's Dr. Adishino from FTP Lectures. Uh, today I'm going to be talking about Residency Chronicles. Now, I know you're probably watching this video and wondering what exactly does medical training entail being a physician and try to go from college into medical school and eventually into residency. Well, the truth of the matter is that the calling of becoming a physician is a very daunting task that very few people in the world actually choose to follow that path. But if you ever decide to follow that path, you know, there's a few things I want you to know that this is one of the most prestigious profession in the world and it takes people that are genuinely passionate about this profession to be able to do it. So I'm going to share some of the stories that can give you some ideas of what physicians go through when they go through their medical training. So after finishing your college, when you get into medical school, you start this rigorous process of reading extensive amount of material. I mean, if you think about when you're in college and you're taking organic chemistry, okay, and imagine taking organic chemistry, physical chemistry, biochemistry, calculus, and now combine that all together and now add two or three extra semesters of college work combined with all that amount of information and you're supposed to know that within one semester of medical school. So think about going through everything you learn in college pretty much for your first two years of college stacked up into one semester of medical school. That's the volume just to kind of give you an idea the amount of information you have to know. Well, that's just the fun part of the process because now you're just learning the basic science, okay? You're constantly reading. Most schools, if you're doing just regular classes where you start classes at 9 o'clock in the morning, the first year of medical school, and then you go into 4 o'clock in the afternoon, and once you get home, you only have a limited amount of time. You go, you eat some food, and you get to work and start studying. So you start studying from about five or six o'clock in the evening all the way up to 11 at night okay and then you go to bed and you wake up at 7 a.m. in the morning you brush your teeth and you're back to class again and that rolls all the way to, to Friday now by the time Friday rolls around you've got stacks and chapters and chapters of information that you can't even imagine your entire weekend is dedicated to catch up all right most medical students are spending their time reading the entire Saturday and Sunday just try to catch up from the material that has been taught over the week for example, you go into a classroom the first day of medical school and they have about 100 PowerPoint slides and you're thinking, oh yeah, this might take about maybe two or three lectures to cover. No, they're done in an hour. 100 PowerPoint slides and the next lecturer comes in another 100 PowerPoint slides. So within two hours, you're already down 200 PowerPoint slides. Now, within four hours of work, you're looking at 400 to 300 PowerPoint slides you just got to get through for, you know, a total of maybe two or three classes. So this is how the information comes. You know, most people compare medical schools to, um, you know, drinking from a fire hose. The information doesn't stop. It's nonstop. Then you have exams, and these exams are stacked back to back. So the only breathing space you actually do get is when you actually finish your last batch of exams, you get a day off, and you're back up again. And this kind of rolls on for the first two years of medical school. Now, first year is like that. By the time you get to second year, they even turn it up a notch. You go to a sec second level. Now the information is even denser. Now you're learning about more um, medicine. You're learning pathology because the first first year is all about you know basic science, biochemistry, histology. Okay, so now in the second semester, that's when they hit you real hard. Okay, you're studying longer hours. The classes often start at 8 a.m. in the morning. They're intermittently mixed with cases that you need to learn. And at the same time, by the time you're getting into the end of your second year, you're preparing for your boards, either your USMLE or your complex exam. So now you've got two different monsters coming at you. All right, now this is how it gets very intense. But once you get through the hump of taking your step one, which is your board exam, you get a little bit of relief. You go into your third year of clinical rotations, and then you spend a whole month doing, you know, let's say, pediatrics. You take one shelf exam at the end of your pediatric rotation. So it's a little bit less stressful. And you kind of do that. You know, you maybe like 12 weeks of surgery or eight weeks of internal medicine. You do all this rotation, and you're taking your shelf exams. 
All right, these are just chronicles of just medical students. Now, as you're going through the process, you're gonna feel like you're overwhelmed, overstressed, okay? A lot of things are not going to make sense in the first two years because you're just cramming all this information. And most of the time you get minimal to little patient contact. Some medical schools are doing more patient case learning method whereby they actually get you to go and see more patients so you can actually pull the information you're learning from the basic science aspect and the clinical science to the bedside. Now your third year is when you actually get to apply all that information, okay? Now you still got to keep reading, but once you get on the clinical board, which which is called the wards, now you're you know you're seeing the patient that you're reading about in a textbook, and then you're applying the concepts. Okay, now the gun of the days where you're sitting down for eight, ten, twelve hours studying daily and on weekends. Now the difference about thirty is you get to wake up like going to a regular job in the morning. All right, you wake up seven a.m. by eight a.m. you're already in the hospital depending on when your rotation starts. If it's general surgery, you're there by 5 a.m., 6 a.m. in the morning, okay? Now, it's different because you're not sitting down at home and reading. You're actually working, so you're seeing patients, and you're expected to go home and read. That's the difference. So it's a little more challenging because you're fatigued and tired from just working all day, and then you come home and read. Compared to your first two years of medical school, whereby you're actually sitting down most of the time, listening to lectures, and you're just taking in all the information. Okay, now, by the time you get to your fourth year of medical school, things start to get a little bit easier. You take your step two, you're ready to go, you're feeling great, you're learning more and more about management of patients. Okay, this is how medical students training begin and they're transitioning from being a regular student to going into become a physician, full-fledged resident, going to that physician level of mentality. Now, by the time you get to your fourth year, you're actually making much more better clinical decisions. Your third year, you're just doing history and physical exam, learning to take adequate stories from the patient, and learning how to make diagnosis based on what you have read. You might not know the management yet because you need that step two. That's where you learn all that management material. So once you take your USMLE step two, CK, CS, or U complex uh, PE and complex um, CK, then you're ready to be able to apply most of that knowledge at the bedside, okay? Now, in your fourth year, you, after you've done all these rotations, now you have to pick one specialty. So by the beginning of your fourth year, you're like, hey, I want to do urology. You want to do ophthalmology. You want to be like an internal medicine doctor. You want to be a, you know. So you're picking your specialty. I picked emergency medicine. By the time I got to my fourth year, now I'm doing about multiple rotations in emergency medicine. So this is how we pick our specialties. That's when we actually make that distinction of if, what area of medicine we want to go into. So now, once you pick that specialty, you do four months or, about, or more, about three to four months of that rotation. And once you have mastered and you feel comfortable doing those rotations, you, get, you want to get good grades on them. Obviously, you get honors. That's what's your goal. Once you do well on those, you're not preparing yourself for the residency match, okay? That's the fun part. Fourth year of medical school is a little bit more chiller. You're able to actually relax. You're reading. You're still expected to read the information and shine on your rotation, but the pressure is a little bit less, okay? Now, you're a big boy. Now, you go into the match, you apply for the match, and then you match into residency, okay? This is how four years of medical school actually eventually kind of wraps around and the extensive rigorous training that physicians have to go through in order to actually begin the second phase of their training, which is residency. Now, in part two of this video, I'm going to share with you some of the nitty-gritty that you never told about when you start residency. Okay, I want you to click the like video, like this video, and also come to my website www.ftplectures.com to check out some of the education lectures that I have prepared for you guys. Okay, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in part two. Have a nice day. Bye bye.